What is Gucci, everybody? Today, we are going to be talking about chapter one of Noam Chomsky's book, Requiem for an American Dream. It's 10 Principles of Concentration of Wealth and Power. I believe the movie is still on Netflix. I have not watched the whole movie. Book's really short, but the text is really small, too. It, there's a lot of white space. But it's a really good book on Noam Chomsky's 10 Principles for How We Got to where we are today, and the prevailing ideology of where we are today, I think, is defined as neoliberalism. Now, what is neoliberalism? Well, neo means new, and it's a totally different concept than liberalism by itself. And I'll let Chris Hedges, who writes the beginning quote of the book, define it. Noam Chomsky, in Requiem for the American Dream, directs the fierce light of his intellect on the utopian ideology of neoliberalism. The absurd idea that markets should dictate all aspects of human society, okay? And that is neoliberalism, is that simply everything is seen through the eyes of the market. And I think so much so that even you eventually see your own social relationships to the environment, to other people as a marketplace, as how do I get the most money out of someone, or how do I get the best job, how do I get the most extraction, most wealth, out of everything I do, and that's seeing something from a market value. And in my opinion, you can't do that because there are some things that should be off limits to the marketplace. Just to start education, the environment, and probably healthcare. Your own personal health. You shouldn't be able to make money off somebody having cancer, for instance, in my opinion. But that's for another debate. His first chapter, he talks about his 10 principles. We're getting back to that. He talks about the first one which is reducing democracy. And he talks about two characters and how they had different prevailing ideas. And there was James Madison and Aristotle. And James Madison defined a democracy as protecting the opulent, the rich, the aristocrats against the populace, against you know the rest of the population. So he believed the rich should pour and dict and they were, you know, chosen to be the to be the leaders of society and should dictate the conditions for you know the middle class and below. Aristotle believed that we should simply reduce inequality so that all the masses can vote. He also believed in a true democracy, meaning everyone has a legitimate seat at the table, whether they're poor or whether they're rich. And that to avoid the problem of democracy, which is majority rule, which is if the poor get too unhinged and the wealth get too wealthy, obviously there will be more people, more poor people. They will take power through democracy and then re redistribute land and resources to themselves. So Aristotle called for simply the reduction of inequality to prevent a majority rule uprising. James Madison called for a conflicting idea, which is to reduce democracy. And that's what our democracy is, is governed by today, concurrently, is to look at ways to reduce democracy. And what is one of the biggest ways to reduce democracy? Through neoliberalism, through a marketplace, through, you know, hierarchical corporations, where simply not everyone gets a vote, but simply the shareholders, the stockholders get a vote. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below.